Welcome to our mini lecture on the eyes, neck, and the jaw. I've put this lecture in first, so that in our first week, because it's so important to deal with these structures ahead of everything else, in my opinion. So when I'm working with somebody in person, I'm always evaluating the visual system, the jaw, and the neck right out of the gate so that we can really identify the specific dysfunctional movement patterns that have been stored in that person's body. So while we might have um, just some basic concepts, like this muscle is going to overcompensate for that muscle, it's always important to understand that each individual will also have their own specific dysfunctional movement pattern. So anything that we're going to be discussing with these videos are working with the general concepts. It may or may not be very specific to you as an individual. So if it doesn't really do it for you, then, um, then we can, we can, you can private message me or you, I can help you find a practitioner in your area that can help you identify what, specific is, what specifically is going on with your body. So let's first take a hypothetical. Say something fell on the top of your head. So what's going to happen is that you may or may not have a bit of a compression in through the spine, depending on, on how heavy the item was that fell on top of your head. And then you also have the body's response. So if the upper trapezius went up because you just got hit in the head, there's going to be a contraction of that muscle. Depending on how the brain decides to create its compensation pattern, now you may have a constant tension going on in the upper trapezius. That can affect the middle of the back um, and it will affect headaches as well. So that's just one way that I might be looking at uh, what's going on for you as an individual. We want to look at these structures because if there's weakness and dysfunctional movement patterns in through everything that is supporting your head and neck, then you're going to be having chronic headaches, chronic neck pain. It's going to contribute to your fogginess and you're just generally going to feel really unwell. And so we want to fix those kinds of uh, issues ahead of time. So why are the eyes important? Well, most, um, most concussions will have a visual aspect to it. Uh, you may have heard of um, different visual assessments. I've used King Divic assessment. It's a tracking assessment um, in the field of, of visual neuroscience. There's different ways that people have been um, researching how to use uh, different computer tracking systems to help strengthen the eyes. There are uh, neuro optometrists that work with the eyes in a specific way. People are, you know, might be prescribed prism glasses. What I do specifically and the types of things that I'd be teaching you within this program are specific to movement patterns within the eyes and perhaps how they're linking in with the brain on a very basic level. So again, if you're having some visual difficulties and these exercises are, are not helping you, then we can discuss privately what, uh, what type of professional that you need to go see that you maybe not have seen yet to get a deeper look at what's going on with your visual system. Not every person who has been diagnosed with a concussion has been sent to an optometrist or a neurooptometrist for a deeper evaluation. So that's really important as well. These specific exercises for the eyes and, and the eye work is not going to work with 2020 vision. It is more specifically to do with the vestibular system, balance, coordination, maybe blurriness, um, not being able to handle screens or reading for any particular length of time, and sometimes to do with light sensitivity as well. So we have 12 cranial nerves. And four of those nerves are dedicated to the eyes. So it's a huge amount of, of effort going to the eyes. The cranial nerves include also your vagus nerve, which um, we're going to be talking about at a later date, as well as the trigeminal nerve, which is a huge, uh, a huge player in the work that I do. So your vagus nerve actually will innervate 
your organs and it comes up and it branches off and it comes up in through here. Your trigeminal nerve comes in through the jaw and will create pain across the face here. Now trigeminal neuralgia is not going to be the same as maybe some trigeminal dysfunction um, that's affecting your pain pattern. Trigeminal neuralgia is an extremely painful condition that may or may not need, um, again, some people will get some surgical help with that. So this is not a diagnostic for trigeminal neuralgia or treatment necessarily for trigeminal neuralgia. However, if you do have that, some of the activities that we're going to be doing may help you. So with the 12 cranial nerves, they're coming up in through the neck and then coming out in through here. So the reason why we want to address the neck is that we don't want to increase any kind of compression through the neck. We want the muscles to activate and strengthen as best we can so that it's taking the pressure off a lot of these nerves, which are feeding pain up and through here and in through here. So that's why we want to look at eyes, neck, and jaw, because it deals all with the cranial nerves there. The eyes have um, separate muscles, but they work together in movement. So you, it's hard to isolate the muscles from one eye from the muscles of the other eye because they're always working together to create movement in each direction. What I do in session is sometimes when I ask somebody how they were injured, I can predict with a certain level of accuracy uh, what their pain pattern or what the muscular dysfunction might be within the eyes. And that's really important because sometimes you just want to kind of get to the work and see what's going on. There's different things that can happen with the eyes. There can be some shaking. There can be, you know, a little bit of drag that's going on in through there. There can be some convergence issues. So if your practitioner holds out the finger and then draws it in, your eyes are supposed to turn in towards the finger, but sometimes an eye will kind of just float away. <laughs> It'll just move away on its own. That's where you know you have a convergence issue. And that will translate into potentially a neck issue. Your body wants to hold things in space and parallel to the floor. So if there's a convergence issue with one eye, your body will create a compensation pattern on the opposite side. So convergence is that eye coming in and out. So for example, if there's a convergence issue with the left eye, then there might be a, a slight head tilt and you're wondering, why can't I release this muscle? Why can't I go to my massage therapist and this muscle still stays tight? If there's a convergence issue with the left eye, then the body is trying to create a compensation pattern within the visual system that's related to the neck. That is why it's important to have your eyes assessed along with your structural system. Also, if there's a tracking issue, say left to right, that could create a rotational pattern as well. So, the, and again, this is a hypothetical, but for example, if, I, if I'm working with somebody who say was hit on, their, on one side, I might actually find all the compensation patterns on the opposite side. I've got to fix the eye on this side and it helps to release what's going on over here. It doesn't always happen that way, that's why you know, a thorough assessment is ideal, but this is going to give you some ideas of what might be going on. Another pattern I might see is that if you're driving a car and you've been rear-ended, so now we, we have a whiplash effect forward and back. However, the link to the eyes, if you're, if you're sitting at a stoplight and you're looking up at the rear of your mirror and you're thinking, oh gosh, that guy's not stopping, then what can happen is that you're looking up as you get hit and it's a common pattern that I see in clinical practice where now there's a dysfunctional movement pattern between this muscle and this muscle because it was looking up when the impact happened. And again, the, the brain will create a compensation pattern wherever it needs to. And so then in clinical practice, looking up and to the side is gonna be really uncomfortable. 
Same thing, if you slipped and you fell backwards, it's most likely there's going to be a, a, a problem between these muscles looking up and looking down, as well as the link to the back of the neck. It, it all works together. It all needs to be evaluated together. You're going to be following up with some of the eye videos, the neck video, and the jaw video as well, because they're all important. So if there's a clenching of the jaw, if you've been, if you've been hit in the side of the face, there's going to be some sort of a jaw dysfunction. So we want to make sure you're releasing the muscles in through the jaw so that it releases the tension on the nerves that are coming through and feeding into the face. That is really, really important. We want to work with the muscles of the neck, the back and the front. Again, we're going to follow that up with another video, just showing you a couple of things that you can do with, with the neck. And that will help to release some of the tension that's putting on the nerves that are coming, your cranial nerves that are coming out of their cervical spine that are going up and also feeding down and ends up into your vestibular system as well, your postural system, which we're going to be discussing at a later date. So again, I didn't want to make this, this video too long, but I did want to identify why it's important that you have your eyes, your neck, and your jaw evaluated and why we're adding these videos at the beginning of your units. We really want to see how they're affecting you and your symptoms. If you have any questions, please feel free to jump in on the Q&A on Thursdays. Um, or Fridays, sorry, I think I've put it in on Fridays. But the Q&A, you can um, go through the videos, send me a private message if you need to. If you've purchased the program, then you also have um, a 60 minute virtual session that you can book with me if you want to discuss um, anything at any point in the six weeks that you're going through this program. It doesn't have to be taken in the first, in the first month. You can, you can figure out when you wanna do that. Um, each of the mini videos, they're going to lead up to um, ideally about an hour of a treatment plan that you're putting together. So you're just going to, we're adding, you know, we've got your videos for the eyes, the neck, the jaw. Next session, we have some more soft, soft tissue stuff that we're going to add to that. Um, then we have our lymphatics. So we're just moving along in that pattern. I want you to really work on these exercises over the next week. Identify which ones feel good, which ones don't. Take note of that. Maybe share within the group. And, uh, and then it helps to work, to work towards building up your own treatment plan. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you in the next unit.